Okay, we're sitting here with Tom Steinbeck, who was born in 1928. Let's go back to the earliest years you can remember, Dad. Uh, what are some of your memories back when you're in your single-digit years? Well, I, uh, I remember August of 1931 because uh, at Lake Okoboji they had a um, merry-go-round right on the edge of the beach, Sandy Beach, and uh, that was Depression years, and uh, I, my dad let me ride for one whatever the uh, fare was, but then I wanted to keep riding, and he took me off, and uh, so I went down to the beach and threw a temper tantrum, and uh, he come down to pick me up, and he, I threw sand in his face, and man, he just flipped me right in, out in the lake over my head, so he had to wade in to get me get me out, and he had uh, back then they had uh, summer suits that called uh, seersucker, and uh, so he uh, took me out there. There's a dock right close by there, so he set me on that, and then his watermark was down there up to his waist. Uh, the wet pants and him matter in hell and me had my old mouth open yowling so that's uh, I rem how I remembered it was August uh, 1931 is my mother took a picture of me and my dad and uh, on the back in those days they stamped the date that was developed then I remember uh, 1932 I had a uncle he married my uh, dad's sister, and he, he, was, he had a real gruff voice, and I was always scared of him. He hated kids, so he got a brand new 32 Ford, and uh, I was riding in the back seat, and uh, my mother was sitting up in front with him. I guess they're going down to the stockyard to pick my dad up. Anyway, uh, he was pounding on the steering wheel. This car's a lemon. Well, I. I knew what a lemon was, but I couldn't associate it with a car till several years later. Uh, and I always liked cars because my mother didn't like to take me downtown with her shopping because I wanted to s s touch the fender on every car. In those days, they uh, nosed the car into the curb in the business district. <laughs> what do you mean, touch the fenders? You'd go around to all the cars? Yeah, just touch it. I liked to like the looks of them and you know just uh get as close to them as i could i guess so did uh your dad and mom encourage that no no i just inbred in me i still like cars so uh let's see what well, well, kind of 1933 well, i'll just remember the outstanding uh years uh my dad got a new 1933 Ford. It was a V8 engine and a dark blue body, cream-colored wheels, white side walls, and had a Greyhound on a radiator cap, a Greyhound dog, and it had twin horns, chrome horns, and as a V8 engine. That thing went like the wind. And... Uh, I remember that car. I was. I remember being at the dealership picking it up with my dad. So he'd take you out in the cars that he had a lot. Yeah, yeah, because he used them for buying cattle. And, well, I'd ride along with him in the summertime in school, and he'd dump me off at them small towns in the sand hills of Nebraska. I was buying cattle, and I'd play with the town kids. And even in uh, Wyoming, I remember I was playing cowboy and Indians. And then kids give me a pony to ride. Luckily, I didn't have a saddle on. They dud was going wide open around houses in town. Well, I didn't see the clothesline. They went under a clothesline. It was ahead of me enough. I didn't see him duck, and that caught me right in the Adam's apple and took me <laughs> took me off the horse, pony in short order. And I remember a hard time getting my breath. So, what did you enjoy more, uh, riding horses and being around horses and livestock, or or uh, cars? Well, it's both. I mean, I enjoyed both, but I'd say probably the cars over the horses because when I was a kid, I stayed on ranches in Wyoming, and 
uh, was in a saddle from five in the morning till four in the afternoon, so you know it was quite tiresome. It wasn't uh, what you'd call pleasure riding for me, so there's always a job to be done. <clears throat> So if somebody's wondering what Elmer was like back, you know, in your teenage years and earlier, uh, talk a little bit about Elmer, what kind of personality he had, uh, what kind of things he enjoyed doing, and how he act- interacted with you. Well, I started out with Elmer's dad. In horse and buggies days, he said he'd go 20 miles out of his way to pull a trick on somebody. And uh, he was always... Uh, pulling tricks on somebody. I remember in a dare, he'd do anything on a dare. I'd hear a lot a lot from other guys that were his age. Uh, like the, there's horse tanks around in the horse and buggy days to water horses and pretty good sized uh, tanks. So some a big shot in town would be walking by a water tank and they'd bet my Granddaddy wouldn't throw that guy in the water in the tank <laughs> with suit and all. He'd go there and flip him right in to pick up some money. So, so he tossed a guy that was walking by in a full suit yeah. who didn't even know him? No, didn't even know him. Wasn't he worried about that guy kicking his butt? No, because he was one of the toughest guys in town. How tall was he? He was a six one. His hands were so big he couldn't get them in his pocket. <clears throat> uh, so he's a prankster? Yeah. What would he get mad about? Well, if somebody screws up, then he'd get mad. But so he had a sense of uh, perfection or yeah. excellence? Yeah. And uh, what kind of things did you do with him? Uh, what, where did he take you under his wings and well, teach you? Kind of, when I was uh, 14, <clears throat> I got a chauffeur's, I mean, a uh, driver's license to drive all over during World War II. And when you're 14, why you, they'd give you a regular driver's license. It wouldn't limit it to the routes you went. So I was his chauffeur, and I'd take him cattle by in, and he'd always, no, uh, in those days they put egg in their co- in a coffee that, that kind of settled the grounds or something, but he could always tell when they put egg in a coffee, and he liked that, and those little towns would always have several restaurants. He said, we'll stop at this restaurant because they got eggs, and they put eggs in their coffee, so... So if he had a specialty or something that he was extremely smart at or good at, what would you say a couple of things uh, w- would be? Well, he was a good uh, cattle trader. I mean... Uh, so he was a good businessman, it's safe to say? Yeah. and uh, Well, I remember once I was with him, and he bid on his uh, bunch of cattle, and uh, uh, the rancher said, well... Yeah, I'll sell him. When my granddad realized that he might have got him cheaper, he said, "Well, he told him I'll, I'm not through bidding yet. I'm gonna, you got some outs, you know. That'd be uh, not as uh, good a cattle, but there weren't. And so the guy, the rancher, uh, realized that he was pulling his legs. So he, there's a Neck yoke, that's what holds the tongue up on a team of horses. He grabbed that and going to take after my granddad with it, and I started crying, and that guy dropped the neck yoke. And my granddad, man, I'm glad you started crying there. You saved my cattle deal. <laughs> Tell everybody uh, what your granddad's name was. Carl Steinbeck, same as uh, my, one of my sons. and uh, But... The uptown, or the people, his friends, businessmen in downtown Sioux City, they always called him Charlie. And the guys at the stockyards called him Steiny. His big Steiny, that was my granddad, and little Steiny was my dad. Gotcha. So uh, what year did uh, Elmer die in? 1967. So talk about a little bit, uh, 50s and 60s, what he was doing. Uh, Was he doing anything else besides the livestock industry? Yeah, he was a clown in the Shrine uh, White Horse Patrol. He had a white mule, and uh, he'd uh, always take, uh, and in parades he'd give kids a ride in, in the parade on it, and he'd take it, uh, I'd help him, he'd take it up, that mule up to the uh, Shriner's Crippled Children 
hospital in Minneapolis <clears throat> and uh, go down the halls and I'd lead the mule and then he'd hold the kid on the a mule and heck he even put it on elevators and never had any problem with uh, the mule relieving himself because we kept water and feet off it for some time before we went there. And doctors said that was the best medicine them kids could get. Mm. And, uh, oh, he was a clown in them horse shows and like he'd see a red-headed woman why he'd go over to her and warm his hands like as on a fire you put your hands on a fire to warm up <laughs> and everybody laughed. He had a lot of tricks that way to make Did he have a lot of friends? Yeah. So what traits or what personality uh, features do you think you took from Elmer? Well, I mean, I just like to see people smile and laugh. So, so you got a sense of, sense of humor and sense of pranks? Yeah. What, do, what about uh, you guys laugh at the same things? Yeah. Um, what, about, what did kids think about Elmer? It sounds to me like he liked uh, to make them laugh and with uh, what you were just talking about. Yeah, he's good at kids. Yeah, he always kept candy in his car and buying cattle and that for ranchers and farmers for the kids. There'd always be kids around, so he'd always have plenty of candy to give. <clears throat> so what would you say your best memory of him is? Any particular story or thing or anything that makes him stand out? Not, not offhand. I mean, um, oh, he had... Uh, he had uh, he had borrow money from a millionaire, <clears throat> and then to run his business. But then that he'd get more money than what he needed. Then he'd load it out to smaller cattle traders and that. So uh, he financed quite a few cattle traders down to stockyards. <clears throat> 